Ahoy! And welcome to Prague, and welcome to another episode of the Mars Guide. Now, in this episode, we're going to look more closely at Charles University. We're going to look at some of the famous alumni and students and professors, and in particular, the genius Albert Einstein who was the professor of theoretical physics at Charles University between 1911 and 1912. And I'm starting this episode directly in front of the apartment where he lived during his time in Prague. Now, speaking of uh, geniuses, what is the connection between Charles University and this very stable genius, Donald J. Trump? Answers at the end of the video. So Charles University was established in 1348 by Charles IV, one of the most famous and influential Czech kings, and we're going to come back to him later since he really deserves to have his own episode. By the way, if there's just one king you ever have to remember from Czech history, it's Charles IV, and you get lots of help. Charles Bridge, Charles University, Charles Square. Charles wanted to expand Prague beyond the city walls and thought by creating a university it would not only make Prague a centre for education and learning in Central Europe, but it also would attract people to Prague, students, scholars, professors and teachers. And by developing a new area to be known as the New Town, by the way, it's still called the New Town today, even though they started building it in the 14th century, the idea would be that a new town would be needed in order to accommodate the expected flow of people into the city. If you build it, they will come. It was authorised on January the 26th, 1347, by a special bull. Not that type of bull, or even this kind of bull. It was a, a public decree, a, a patent, a charter issued by the Pope of the Catholic Church, allowing a community of scholars and teachers to be established, providing there was a faculty of theology. So it was officially established in 1348 and was supposed to follow the grand examples of the University of Paris and Bologna. When the university began, there was no central location, and so for nearly 20 years, lectures and lessons were held in monasteries or in private homes. OK, a little digression here. Maybe it was a bit like the Open University, a university founded in the UK in the 1960s, and the idea was that people who'd missed out on a university education could study later in life and people could study for a degree from the comfort of their living room by distance learning. And this was before Covid. So people on the same course or with the same interests would meet up together, often in each other's kitchens. Also, people would sit up until the early hours of the morning watching lectures broadcast late at night on the BBC or record them on a video recorder and watch them later. People made a lot of fun of these lecturers with their long beards and their strange ties, their flares and their butterfly collared shirts and their highly intellectual insights. In fairness, with its educational videos, the university was ahead of its time. Because if you think about it, where do most of you go if you want to find out something? Like Einstein's equivalence principle, what are the top 10 of the top 10s? Or how do you clean your hamster in a dishwasher? Yes, you go to YouTube. So, back to the university, Charles University. Now, eventually, this Carolinum, which is Latin for Charles, was uh, originally a stately home and was given to the university in 1383 by Baslav IV, Charles IV's son. And although the look of the university has changed a lot over the centuries, this chapel behind me originates from the 14th century. Now, when the university was established, there were four nations. And I'm putting it in inverted commas because they weren't really nations. It was more a reflection of where the students and professors originated from. So there were the Bohemian, Saxon, Polish and Bavarian nations. And I've seen them more like the houses, a bit like in Harry Potter, Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff but without the Quidditch. The upshot was, because of religion and politics, there was essentially a coup by the Bohemian nation that upset the other nations so much so that they threw their toys out of the pram, up sticks and went off to set up their own university in Leipzig in Germany in 1409. As a result of that, Charles University lost its international oomph, its mojo. It shrunk and became a very regional, parochial university. It ended up with only one faculty, the Faculty of Arts, of which Jan Hus, who we talked about previously, became its rector. Another couple of interesting historical facts. 
It was renamed Charles Ferdinand University in 1622, and up until 1784, all lectures and exams were held in Latin. Also, if you were of the Jewish or Protestant faith, you weren't allowed to attend the university. As I said before, in this area, German was the dominant language, and the Czechs struggled to be heard even after the Revolution of 1848, which we discussed previously. By 1863, only 12% of courses at the university were held in Czech, the rest were in German. Now, this language issue eventually came to a head when in 1882 they split the university into two according to the language. They created the Czech Charles Ferdinand and the German Charles Ferdinand universities, and they remained as two distinct factions up until the end of World War II in 1945. Charles University suffered under the communist regime and only truly was allowed to flourish independently after the Velvet Revolution in 1989. The university now has 17 different faculties and are not just based in Prague but in two other Czech cities too and now ranks in the top 300 universities in the world. Some of the university's best-known alumni include Franz Kafka and the author and journalist Max Brod who was Kafka's good friend. When Kafka died of tuberculosis in 1924, he asked Broad to burn all his unpublished manuscripts. Broad ignored him, and three of Kafka's novels, The Trial, The Castle and America, were published after his death. One of the university's most famous and important students is, at least to the Czechs, Jan Palach. He was a student at the Faculty of Arts, and on January 16, 1969, in protest, he set himself on fire near the museum in Wenceslas Square, and sadly died three days later from his injuries. His protest rocked and shocked the world. It is said that he was not only angry about the Soviet-backed invasion in 1968, but also the demoralization of his country following the occupation. It is a tragic, heroic, yet important story in the recent history of this country, and one which we will return to in a future episode. One of the university's most notable professors was a physicist, Ernst Mach whose work involved looking at spark shock waves or ballistic shock waves, and using photography he was able to show how, when a bullet or shell moves faster than the speed of sound, it creates in front of it a compression of air. The Mach is also a unit of speed, and Mach 1 is the speed of sound, which is equivalent to 1,236 kilometers per hour, or 768 miles per hour, and in supersonic jets such as Concorde, they used to fly at Mach 2. So, on to Einstein. Einstein moved from Zurich to Prague together with his first wife, Maleva, and their two young sons, Hans Albert and Eduard. In Prague, he published 11 papers. Six of them were concerned with the theory of relativity. And one of the reasons he liked this apartment behind me was because it had electricity and an elevator, or a lift to those who live in the UK, which he didn't have back in Zurich. Now, he thought Prague a beautiful city to look at, but at the same time he complained about the Czech language, bed bugs, and the miserable water, which he thought absolutely disgusting, and would only drink it after boiling it. Interestingly, quite often on my tours, tourists come up to me and say, is it safe to drink the water here in Prague? Answers at the end of the video. Hang on, I've already done that, haven't I? Never mind. Yes, it's safe to drink the water in Prague. As a full professor, Einstein gave regular lectures on mechanics, molecular physics and thermodynamics. In 1911, his lectures were held in the Clementium. In 1912, in the building of the present-day Faculty of Natural Sciences in Venichna Street, which is about a 20-minute walk across the river from his apartment. The work that Einstein did in Prague was incorporated into his book on the special and general theory of relativity, which was published in 1916 and was translated later into the Czech language. In a special preface to the Czech edition published in 1923, Einstein said how pleased he was that the book was now published in the language in a country where he had made some of his major observations while sitting in the quiet rooms of the Institute of Theoretical Physics in Venichna Street. When he was not giving lectures or spending time at home, the famous physicist could be found at the salon of Mrs. Berta Fanta, which was located in a building off the Old Town Square and served as a meeting place for German-Jewish intellectuals, which, apart from Einstein, 
included many other famous participants such as Franz Kafka and Max Broad. They would discuss philosophy and often Einstein would play the violin for them. The site is marked today with his sculpture outside the building. He also used to frequent the Café Louvre. I love the Café Louvre, and if you come to Prague in the near future, then you must make a point of visiting it. It's very imperial. It's full of splendor and elegance. It's a little bit more pricey by Czech standards, but it's worth it. So go there, get a coffee, wine or beer, and soak up the genius atmosphere. Although Einstein very much appreciated living in Prague, his first wife, Maleva, did not. And it wasn't because of the water. She was Serbian and she didn't speak Czech and probably felt isolated and had trouble adapting to the city. The saying is that behind every great man, there's a great woman. And this seems to be the case with Maleva. They'd studied together in Zurich. She even got better marks in the exam than Einstein. And there's evidence to suggest that she even contributed to the publication of his first paper in 1900, but insisted that only he put his own name onto the paper as sole author because she thought it would help his career. Nonetheless, Einstein listened to his wife because after only eight months he was already looking for a new position and finally in the following year he accepted the chair of theoretical physics at the Polytechnical Institute of Zurich, the very place where he and Maleva had studied together. So the Einsteins left Prague in 1912 and Maleva and Einstein divorced in 1919 and in 1921 he returned to Prague for the final time. That's my look at Charles University, its students, alumni and professors, including Einstein. Ah, and I forgot to mention one of its other students. She is Ivana Zelnichkova, who obtained a master's degree in physical education here in 1972. Today, she's better known as Ivana Trump, the first wife of Donald J and as mother of Donald Jr, Eric and Ivanka. So there we are. That's my connection between Charles University and the current President of the United States. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more in the future, please don't forget to click and subscribe and press the bell button down below in order to be notified when a new video is published. Now, on to our next location and episode. So behind me is the house of the Black Madonna, one of the first examples of Cubist architecture here in Prague. In fact, there are many examples in Prague of Cubist architecture, and we're going to discuss some in the next episode. So once again, thank you for watching.